Hello and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. This is going to be a really quick video, a little different from what I've normally done. I'm still fighting to get my NASA series to get back into it. Um, I don't think this is the end of the line. I've just got to find which um, quick save I can rename Persistent to actually get it to load. Once I get it to load, um, I can get right back to where I was. It's just uh, getting past any memory crashes. I'm probably going to have to run it in OpenGL to get into it, but I just have not had the time to mess with it. One of the things that keeps popping up a lot is uh, people asking exactly how I modded um, my tech tree. And without visual reference, it can be kind of uh, difficult to wrap your head around it sometimes. So I'm just going to do a quick video demo of how I do this. First off, I'm in sandbox mode right now to show um, what parts I need for the uh, space plane I have at the very beginning. And those were the only parts I really modded. Um, and this will work for modding any parts. I'm just um, going to show the ones I actually changed. It's going to be the Mark I cockpit, the small landing gear bay, um, the AV-T1 winglet, and the AV-R8 winglet. These fuel tanks and that engine are open from the beginning. Um, so just kind of quick save that. That's not really a tuned aircraft. That's not going to fly. Um, that was just quickly slapped together. And this is a completely vanilla install of um, 0 0.90. Just to keep things simple, when I get into my file structure, um, and start taking screenshots, it'll um, it'll look a lot no nicer and uh, less confusing. So, uh, I'm just gonna rename that. Once the game kicks into gear, we can go into the uh, tech tree. And starting tech, we've got this little tank and the LVT-30. So we've got fuel and engines taken care of. What we basically need at this stage is a cockpit, and you can use the Mark I command pod if you don't want to cheat a, um, another cockpit in, but that's totally up to you and how you want things to look. If you're running in Ferrum, um, you can put the Mark 16 parachute on it to make it more aerodynamic. But as you can see, no airplane parts. I'm going to really quickly run through um, how you mod a, a CFG file. First off, where, where you find them and then how to mod them to get things into um, your initial tech node. Okay, before we get into this on any nitty gritty technical levels, I'm gonna make a disclaimer right now. I am not making any assumptions on anybody's uh, modding ability or their technical knowledge of text editing or anything like that. This is gonna come as an explanation for this is your very first game you've ever modded. So if you're just looking for some quick tips and maybe a little understanding on where CFG files are, this is going to come off as a little pedantic, and I'm really going to do my best to keep my uh, tone of voice from sounding that way. Everybody's got to start somewhere. Um, if this is your very first time to mod a game, then um, don't feel ashamed about that at all. And if you know a lot about modding and text editing, then, well, really, I don't know why you're watching this. But secondly, um, I am not trying to make anybody feel or sound like an idiot. Um, so we're going to start with the very basic basics. If you have Kerbal Space Program installed through Steam, it is going to be in your Steam, Steam Apps, Common file, like all your other games. And from there, we're going to go into the game data. And so let's get into the more technical side of this um, right now. To start things off, we're going to back up our stock part files, and I'm just going to com copy the complete folder that holds them. So from game data, we're going to proceed to squad. Once again, this is just a completely stock install of 0 0.90. Going to go into parts. And first things first, we're going to go to the Mark I cockpit, which is in command. You can kind of see that um, command line up there, squad parts command. Go into Mark I cockpit right click hit copy and what I did is I created a separate folder on my desktop to save these just named it stock backups you're gonna right click anywhere and hit paste you're gonna do that for the small gear bay the AVR8 winglet and the AVT1 winglet um, and those are in arrow and the small gear is in um, wheels so back to our command area or command folder, we're going to go back to the Mark 1 cockpit, only this time we're going to go into it and we're going to open the Mark 1 cockpit.cfg file. 
And right down there where you see I've got highlighted tech required for flight control, we're going to change that to start. And that means once you start the base game, that'll gonna, that will be in your very first tech node. We're going to proceed to aerodynamics and do the same for the AVT1 winglet and the AVR8. Showing the AVR8 first, and I didn't highlight it, but you can see tech required. Um, AVT1, tech required, change all of this to start. And that's start is your very first tech node. And for the very last part we're going to mod, we're going to go into the wheels. Going to go into small gear bay. Exact same process. Going to open the .cfg file. And we're going to change tech required to start. And this will give you the ability to build a, spl a space plane from the get-go um, without having to download any other mods. And if you do break something, you have your stock backups that you can put right back um, in the original folder locations. And with that all out of the way, you can see we've got our winglet, our other winglet, the Mark I command pod, and the small, or the Mark I cockpit, sorry, and the small gear bay in our starting tech tree. And so if we come into the space plane hangar, we can very quickly snap together our aircraft. And this is, like I said, this is just uh, putting parts on with the barest um, consideration to actual usability. Because this thing isn't going to fly strictly. I'm still going to be a perfectionist about it, apparently. Old habits and all that. And there you have it. Um, I hope this helped out a lot. Um, trying to explain these in comments, I understand, is not quite as clear as I was hoping to be. Uh, so, like I said, I really hope this uh, helps anybody out. Um, there's other videos out there, but this is mine uh, to show how I did it. Hopefully it was uh, descriptive enough. Stay tuned, and I'm hoping um, this weekend's really full. I'm hoping maybe, and looks like my Monday's going to be really full too. So. I really don't have a timeline when I'm going to get uh, KSP back working. I'm going to experiment with it and try to actually get into the save tonight. Um, but as far as actually finding time to play, um, I may be waiting a little bit longer yet on that. So uh, thanks for your patience and uh, stay tuned.